Welcome to Studio 58A Live here at the Jamaica Information Service, our discussion program coming to you live on Facebook. I'm your host, Vaughn Davis. Thank you to everyone joining us online wherever you are around the world. We really do appreciate it. And as you watch, remember to send in your questions and your comments so we can put them to our guests. And like how we have your attention, do us a favor now. Share this video with a friend or two or five hundred so we can have a very lively discussion. Now, it started with the harder they come in 1972. That was the first brick laid in building up Jamaica's film industry. And today, in 2019, receiving the button and trying to push the, push the industry further is Sprinter the Film, written and directed by our guest today, Storm Salter, in his sophomore film. Along with him is lead actor in the film, Dale Elliott, a.k.a. Ellie Diviner, for those who might know. Welcome to both of you. All right. All right. So... Star, I'm going to start at the beginning. Where did the inspiration for this film come from? Uh, it came from a few places. One, um, obviously, what Jamaica has been doing across the globe in track and field for decades, really and truly. And what you see in Bolt and Shelly and Fraser Price, Veronica Campbell, that, that whole period of dominance mm -hmm. was just super inspiring to me and to all Jamaicans and to many people across the world and who people were paying attention to Jamaican track and field. Yeah. But this film uses track and field as a metaphor but as also as a vehicle to tell a story really about a family and about a young man at that moment in his life is going from being a teenager, being a high schooler, becoming a man. He also goes from being kind of a nobody on the track team to maybe the next great Jamaican sprinter, mm -hmm. and in the background of all of this, he hasn't s seen his mother in person in 10 years, because she left when he was seven, right, right, uh, right. And, and, and has been living illegally. So it was, um, I found that for me, I think that interesting stories are the stories that we can relate to a bit more that aren't based in these extremes and stereotypes, mm -hmm. and, but, but at the same time, something that people are going to be connected to um, and track and field. You know, it was it's it's perfect for track and storytelling. Field, you know, it's a natural connection. Yeah, right? Jamaica <laughs> track and field it just makes sense. Yeah. Now, how do you catch the eyes of Overbrook to get the film back for production? Because we know the challenges that a lot of local films face. You know, in terms mm. of you know getting the film outside of Jamaica and into that wider theatrical kind of release situation. How did you manage to get that happen? Well, it's a few things. One, um, when opportunity comes. You have to, the creative has to be there, the idea has to be there. Mm -hmm. So it was many years of getting this idea to the right point, getting the script to the right point. Um, because to be honest, once we had the script locked, um, my producer Rob Mailer mm -hmm. um, had a connection to Overbrook. Mm -hmm. And months after the script was finished, you know, they were looking for projects, asked him what, what he might have been working on, was able to put the script in front of them. They read it like today and they call the next day and said we have to be a part of this. So mm -hmm. it was great timing um, obviously because they were looking to support more emerging cinema um, but you know we were also ready with a story that mm -hmm. had legs. Alright cool. Yeah. Let me switch over to Dale now. Um, how did you land the role and what was the audition process like? How did you get involved with this? Because everybody knows I'm social media, your skits and so on, but you know, then for seeing our movies are different than that completely. How did you get in that lane? Well, I landed the role thanks to social media. Mm. Uh, Storm Salter said he was in Norway mm. and a lady was watching one of my videos mm. and she was laughing and she said to him, you don't know this child? And then he saw me and then while he was scrolling through my photos, he saw a photo of me running. Mm. That's when I got a call. Got a call and it asked me if I can come down to the office, Cinecom Production Office at the time, for an, um, for an audition. And when I was there, he asked me to tell me about myself. And I was telling him that, okay, I, I'm, at the time I was 19, I said I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. I went to Kingston College. I did track and field, you know. My mother lives abroad. And he said, you know that I am shooting a movie that is very similar to what you just told me a mm -hmm. while ago. So him say, must him give me a day to come back. And then, so he tell me a day to come back for the audition. I went back and then I did a scene from the movie. And then while I was on my way home, I think this is like the next day he called me and he said, yo, you know, say, you get the role. Mm. So it wasn't like a, it is not. A long audition. No, it was just like, like it's just, as him said, certain things just happened at the right time. Mm -hmm. All right, so in terms of making that transition, going on set, being an actor, was it intimidating or was it something that you just kind of allow yourself to get involved in? It is something that I had to adjust to right. because 
you know me from doing six seconds and 15 30 right, right, where right, right, right. i am my director my producer my everything mm. so i get like you know to to be on set where i'm not used to nothing at all where everybody tells me what to do how to do it and when to do it mm -hmm. so that was a bit difficult for me like in the, in the first instance because i was as this is my first time acting so i had acting i had acting um training up like like two months prior to mm -hmm. the film because mm -hmm. i used to like go to the lines and then i had like background track and field training that i had to do to the lean up but when we're actually shooting like that first week or week and a half i was like yo miss i, I actually the thing it did like a bit like a breeze mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like that hard hard all right see you till me drop it down. took him a while to get used to it too and took us, a, took us a while to figure out our like working relationship get into the creative you know? so in terms of making sure the film is authentic and everything was what was that process like you know what i mean yeah um it's funny because a lot of people in jamaica it's always interesting what different audiences say but like, it's definitely been interesting some of the comments that jamaicans say and a lot of them ask like how oh, that same thing just asked me how we get it to feel so authentic and it's like for me that's who we are like for me uh, the way a conversation happens or the way people joke about something or the way you play with words and language and stuff i just trying to capture something that's as close as possible to what i'm witnessing in mm. my life you know or have witnessed how people really deal instead of trying to like fit it into this kind of hollywood version of character or ways of dialogue or stuff mm -hmm. you know what i mean because for me that's what's interesting and fresh it's like let's find a let's find something that because that's the thing about filming it's all about discovery mm -hmm. so if you feel like you're discovering something about a place you've never seen before or you're discovering a truth yeah, that has yeah, not been yeah, yeah. so clear before then you're going through a process of discovery and that's what storytelling should be it should be you know the person watching or reading or listening should be discovering so i think that's valuable and i'm very much into realism so i don't really like over performance i more just try to make my actors feel something pull from their own experience and let them body it's react reflected i mean i yeah. just think the question like with the big scene in, a, in the stadium you see me run around the track i mean did you actually film get people in a stadium and full up the stadium yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> it's called movie magic man <laughs> movie magic, <laughs> but, movie magic. But we did get people trust me we didn't get people but um I, boy, if we were we didn't get 35,000. Yeah, no, we didn't. <laughs> but it looks like we did, you know? Yeah, right. But that's enough. part of movie magic, you know? All right, see? Yeah, that. yeah. At some point, we're going to try, we bring up something, we're going to try to see if we can get to show the trailer to persons online. We are trying, hopefully, the technology cooperates, but that's a little later from yeah. now. Cool. All right, so let me ask you this now. What has the process of making this film taught you about movie making and what lessons can you now impart for, on those who are trying to be part of this industry and try to raise it up and, and, and you know, mm -hmm. make it a sustainable thing? What lessons have you learned from this experience? Yeah, well, I've learned a, a lot in a different kind of, a lot of phases. First and foremost, as the writer and director and as a person responsible for seeing the creative vision through to the end. Mm -hmm. um, when you're making films, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of people involved, a lot of people with opinions. You, are, you have... And especially Just once you shoot it, then you get into post, and the film isn't done until it's done. And, you know, you can make, you can shoot a set of thing and mm -hmm. come make ten different films depending yeah, on how yeah, it, it's yeah, treated yeah, yeah. afterwards. So, going going through a little big journey of of figuring out stuff, compromise this, that, and the other, and ultimately realizing that what is really winning is the initial vision that I had, mm -hmm. and realizing no matter what no matter how the, the stage gets bigger and the new things feel new every time you have to believe in the vision that you had that inspired this because when we are create stories it's like, it's like inspiration it's like you're channeling yeah. some other energy right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if that really happened for you to do and it gets you to a certain stage don't start doubting it when you take to the next stage you know what i mean you have to see your vision through so that was important and a key thing about being able to do that is having a team that truly does their role mm -hmm. and knows when to kind of how to make you thrive right. so that's one that's one thing about it that is true stay true to your vision don't compromise or water it down because you think you have to do that the higher up you go right? right in fact it should be the opposite way the higher up you go is the more authentic and risk-taking and adventurous the work should become um, and otherwise I think that um, for, for Jamaicans doing telling stories I think I believe that we are getting to a stage of real much more confidence in the types of stories about ourselves that are relevant. You know what I mean? So we should really 
don't try to make a Jamaican version of a Hollywood thing mm -hmm. or something else or a Jamaican version of this or that. F films are always going to inspire. We're all inspired by other work. But be confident in enough to know that even the smallest or weirdest of your story is relevant. In fact, that's what the world of cinema wants to see. So feel confident in that little idea that might seem strange. Mm -hmm. it, if it feels that way, it might be good and explore it. Yeah, you know what I mean? In terms of like... Um, getting things distributed and catching the eye of, um, of producers yeah. from overseas. Or, you yeah. know, what, what, what advice you can lend to those who might be yeah. interested in doing a similar, similar well, thing? There's no one way to do it. I mean, look, you had built a serious audience. I think when we met, you probably had 90-something thousand or it was close yeah. to, you know, thousand followers. something, I think. Or, oh, maybe that's okay. You grew, you grew yeah, yeah, a yeah, lot. Grew <laughs> um, but he had a big audience already. Mm -hmm. And that was from Vine videos, right? And then Instagram videos. And it was an Instagram video that I saw of his that caught my eye and made it look further. And, and right? So there's no one way what you need to do is produce put as in create content. work mm -hmm. put out make the work complete the circle don't sit on pony for 10 years mm -hmm. you know fermenting some okay. ideas at that time you know do it do it do it because um then you can see what happened if you do something one way you see what people react to or what they don't react to i've made work that i don't want the world to see <laughs> but i learned from it yeah. isn't it so that's that's the key thing is Take one step towards something, it'll take two steps towards you. If you have a group of friends and you want to make a film, find people within your circle, make it. You can do it on your phone. You can cameras same, are cheap. Same thing for uh -huh. actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing for actors. Like some people ask me like how I get the acting job or you know, how how do you get into acting? But at the same time you have social right. media, there's right, right, there's right. Facebook, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's YouTube where you can even make money from it. So if you can produce your own content and put it up and if mm -hmm. people like it, you see how people deal with it. If they like yeah. it, they take it down, you put up something else. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, so you put yourself out there. Now we have mediums where hundreds of thousands of people can get fine. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and it'll change people's life every yeah. day. So basically, just get proactive and just start yeah. the work. Just basically. start doing the work. See create the idea the is true. If you want to be a creator, create and right. complete. Complete the circle. It's a big thing, you know, and the bigger the projects you take on is the more effort you take to complete the circle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are very good, but they don't take it all the way to the end mm -hmm. or they don't see it all the way through. You never know who might see you. Yeah, you never know who might see you. <laughs> and that is what makes see. you win when, you, when the idea goes all the way through. Get it done, get it taught. If you, if you still want to do something, move on to the next idea. All right, all right. You know? So, I know that being in this film had a real personal impact on you in terms of what it allowed you to do that connection with your family. Talk about that and make persons know that process, that element yeah. of the thing for you. Uh, so my mother left Jamaica when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And my father left before that, I think. But um, it was because a sprinter why I even, even to get the, the US visa to go and see my father for the first mm -hmm. time. December the 10th, yeah, 2016. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then sprinter took me to my mother. February the 12th, 2019. So it put my family together and it helped me build a relationship with my father now where I can even say he can file for me and I can go live with him. Mm -hmm. Or I can now I can develop the, the courage to go out on my own and I can live at LA now. Mm -hmm. So I try to chase a dream. All right. Yeah, so it's like Sprinter basically put my family together. What if I think Sprinter do for me? If me, if it would probably if it was for Sprinter right now, I would even have locks. No <laughs> people <laughs> even know that. <laughs> I wouldn't have locks. I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't look at like this right now. Cause when before Sprinter shoot me slim. <laughs> Yeah, somebody that feel like bail myself. So you're committed to the acting thing, the, the bug biting, and well, that's it. Well, you know? yeah. At the first, like the first week and a half, I'm never sure if one did this. But then. You can't find something where there's so much fear for your life, where mm. change your life so much, and then just look upon it as, all right, that was just something and yeah, push it one side. Right. Just like with Instagram, I, mean, I feel like I can never like put down my content creation in terms of like comedic skits and stuff, mm -hmm. because that is where everything starts. I can try evolve, but my evolving would be creating longer videos mm. and working with more Instagram comedians. Yeah, right. You know, cause a whole heap of we in a Jamaican, trust me, we're well very talented. Yeah, enough how we still. I, I, I tell you. Listen, big Dutty Bear on the live. Uh, big up Dutty Bear. <laughs> yeah, big up Dutty Bear. Uh, seeing the visual there, cool. All right. Um, 
No, stop. Mm -hmm. Mostly Jamaican said, mostly Jamaican workers, mostly mm -hmm. Jamaican people involved in the production. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Great, because that's that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Beyond just making the work, is is make is doing the work with my fellow Jamaicans as much as possible and um, creating opportunities for people to step up their skills, step up their game. There's enough people that might uh, assisted on a film or played a certain role in a film, learned certain things, step up to the next thing. So for me, any opportunity to, for the Jamaican film industry to be working or to be developing and enhancing their skills is something I'm very much into, right? So, and um, you know, these are the people I'm shooting with all the time. It's not just random. When yeah. I'm doing commercials or anything I'm doing, I'm shooting with this crew. I mean, you know, they, they work hard for me and we mm. get along. And so for me, it's like when the movie comes, we're after that on the movie, exactly. right? Um, and then, of course, there's, you know, but film is not a, you can't half step, it's not a friend thing really yeah. either. It's a, pro, it's a delivery thing. Yeah, so yeah, you only yeah, work yeah. with people who are going to deliver. And we have great s crew here. And also, I know, for, for y people coming up that may not know, there's uh, so much skill sets required to make a film that you might think, oh, you have to, you have to be a writer or a director to be interested. Mm -hmm. It's like there's so many different things that are involved from makeup to costume design to architecture to so much things involved mm -hmm. in making a film happen. So it's, it's a growth area, I think, for, for Jamaican no, right. youth and folks in general, you know, something to look into. No, I see, that's down. Just tell you, you don't have to just be a filmmaker or somebody interested in film for it to, to feel like you can play a role. Because I'm sure you probably see some people who has costume yeah. designer. Yeah, you know, man. Just me. extras of course. are just people. No. But make it, takes, it takes some <laughs> caterers. Um, I never, I had no idea so yeah. much things <laughs> had right. to be done. Yeah, carpenters, painters, this is like Every, a non-stop. <laughs> Right. What the people have name? We make sure we say everything the way it's supposed to be. Um, art department. Art department. Yeah. yeah. Right. Makeup boss, hair boss. All right. Yeah. Why well, talk to me now, um, Dale, about the work collaborating with all the other persons, the actors, the cast, and everybody that made everything come together. What was that like? Building up the rapport and working together to create the film and how the relationships that you formed during the process. Well, Bef before the film, before we started shooting, we did, I did develop a relationship with Kadim because you know Kadim played my brother, mm -hmm. you know. So we started to have a good relationship. We start vibe every day. That's why people say the film looks so authentic mm -hmm. because you know. I don't know favor. I would look alike. <laughs> kind of <laughs> we look alike. And then favor, Chantal, we used to go out, go through the lines every day with Chantal. And then, but be honest, we are Jamaicans, and you know, you put a lot of Jamaicans in one place. Something good will happen. Natural. Chances imagine. are, if you put us in a good in a good setting where everything is good, something good will happen. So, I love I love work with people. Don't even the production apart from the filming. Mm. The production was great. I used to like just going to the makeup boss when I don't know nothing. I sit down and I talk, <laughs> chat and I laugh till I'm ready. I go back and do. I had so I did like work with the people and they make me comfortable. Yeah. And because I was the only novice, well, not really the only novice, but other persons had experiences in like drama, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I was like the first, this was my first time acting mm -hmm. on like a screen. So, you know, I had Chantal and Kadim, them talk to me. I have, I got help from Leonie Forbes. Mm -hmm. You know, she well, used yeah. to, the a great, great Leonie yeah. Forbes. She used mm -hmm. to sit down and talk to me in the days after training and stuff. So, why we shooting? And then internationally with David Alan Greer. Yeah, exactly. That was a great, trust me, that man, <laughs> yeah, everybody's yeah, supposed to know him from a living color. Yeah, yeah, man, and 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 that so man on. learned patois on, <laughs> on, on set. <laughs> yeah, and he's just a character, man. And he's well, just a character. Cool. The man is just funny. Yeah. All right. Now, let me ask you this now. You, as a young man, when you start making these movies, and I mean, everybody has the idea that you want to take it as far as humanly possible. Did you see yourself winning an, as many awards as this film has taken, has, has won? I mean, just to be clear, the film won Best Feature Film, Best Director, and the Audience Award at the 2018 American Black Film Festival. It was also the jury winner for Best Narrative Feature at the 2019 Pan African Film Festival. Mm -hmm. You, as a Jamaican youth, yeah. pick up a camera and say, you know, I'm like this genre, I'm like this thing, I'm going to uh, make some movies. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Did you even see this happening way uh, back in the day? Um, I don't know if I saw it going ex exactly that way, but I've always believed um, in myself and, and the work mm -hmm. and the relevance of the work. And I've been working hard to manifest these realities. Mm -hmm. So when I see them happen, I feel blessed that they happen. 
and I feel like whatever I've been doing must have played a role. So I feel good about it for sure. And I also don't feel, I feel like we're just getting started. Right. You know what I mean? You definitely on this journey have moments where you wonder if it's really because, you know, but for me, it's like the sky's the limit. Like I feel like Caribbean cinema is being defined now. I mean, we have great works of Caribbean cinema, not to yeah. say we don't, but there's a period now where I think it's a big Doors moment of growth. Right Doors now. open. The world is paying attention in bigger numbers. The shift to streaming and larger markets. Is, everything is kind of happening at a moment where, um, when I look at the stories to tell, I can't. You can't run out of them. Yeah, definitely. You can't know? run out of people to watch them. Yeah, now. exactly. No exactly. man can just take up him phone. I see him see where star my going with on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So big up to Ricardo Porsches, one of our long-time viewers, always checks in on the live. I really appreciate it, Ricardo. Love the love the eyes, love the support. No, mm. films like these, I mean, one can say we've seen them before in terms of the narrative and the, and, and, and the storyline, the plot, so to speak. But what differentiates them from other films is often the focus and the, the, the vision of the director. What was your driving force in telling this story to make sure that it, it I mean, it's stood in its own lane so mm -hmm. to speak compared mm -hmm. to other films which are similar yeah. you know because i mean for example yeah cool runnings or something like that yeah but, you know what was your vision to making sure that it stood in its own lane in that regard well it, once you actually watch the film you will see how different it is mm -hmm. um Total sports time. films are a genre mm -hmm. obviously um and when you're marketing them or you have a trailer you always put in this big race against this dynamic so you might see those things and think okay i've kind of maybe seen this movie before mm -hmm. um for me, mm. <laughs> that's a ploy. Trust yeah, me. That's just a that's just a that's just a trick <laughs> just <laughs> to me. get you through the gate. Not, that is not a track and field move, and all those things aren't happening. Yeah. But that is really showing the parallel of this young man's focus or lack of focus as he matures and as his family kind of falls apart and as he hopes comes back together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So for me. Um, I think showing Jamaican life in this way, something that does not re um, rely on this more stereotypical, you're going to maybe die. get a story, <laughs> or you know, if you don't, if you, if you lose your ears, you're dead, or something. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, let's let's not go to these extreme stakes. Let's bring it back more into a world that is more middle of the road and pr relatable in a way, and mm -hmm. and and in in a way new. Mm -hmm. And um, that is really that what's the heart of this thing. It's a story of this young man trying to get back to his mother. It's a story of a young man running. He's running fast, but he don't know who he's running for. Is he running for, to get back to his mom? Is he running to impress his brother or his father? So it's really about a lot more. Um, and I feel like uh, once you see it, you're kind of seeing, as I would want to show, my country and the places in my country, the beautiful places in a, in a way that's fresh, like champs. Yeah, definitely. You, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. high time somebody yeah. make a show right. about champs, right? right? You can't so sit in that in that stadium year after year and don't say, "Yo, and this is high drama." This is, you know what I mean? It's a big thing. Yeah. And we filmed champs. Yeah. We filmed the real champs, and uh, got angles and it's all of it in high full speed, and then of course went back with the talent and found ways to bring in our extras and, and morph it so that he's running at the height of full in the and stadium. And we were making uh, trap meets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so tell me, I mean, talk to me about, I mean, the, the experience and the set and so you, you keep mentioning, like you see, you, like holy but just special and individual moments just happen to you. What are some of the most memorable ones that, that happened for you in the, in the process? Yeah, all right. The running scenes. Mm. So on the first day of the running scene, um, well, there was one and we had bolt in it. Mm. The running the, the running scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we only had him for a period of time. So we had to be, you know, we had to be rushing that day. That day I had no background training. I just went and I just run. <laughs> I was extremely tired, you know. And we just had to meet like a certain deadline. But the running scene that made me that that, that got to me the most was the first day on the actual four four week run mm -hmm. where Storm came to me and he was like, um, we're trying to set this up right now, but the way how it is, we need you to, this needs to be a one take thing. <laughs> so we need you to run as hard as I can for the first 200 meters. And then you can just, you know, come home. I think that we all right. So <laughs> when me tell us to run as hard as me can in a man, <laughs> vomit up, can <here>, move. <laughs> Yeah, and then mirrors and I have to do it again. <laughs> camera left the camera. <laughs> oh, <my dear. laughs> 
All right, so them, so them <laughs> basically are true to life. It's, it's not a, it's yeah, not a man, joke I, thing. You never play yeah. a sprinter. You actually I a sprinter. Talk about we get athletes from GC Foster, where the man in my try to run past me. <laughs> so I feel some my them so if they give if 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 storm put me ten meter in front of them, them not catch me. Mm. If him stop beside of them, it's like them blow left me. Nah, right, so <laughs> we did have to find the perfect angle because they're faster than me but me not slow. So it's like if you put if you put me way in front of them it not gonna work. Nah, right. And that is how good Jamaica is because when we go abroad you put me way in front of me. You have to put them way in front of me. Yeah. So you, so you know, when they flip the script now, you are running left of people. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah <laughs> me I run past some man where I get some 30 meter lead. No, so no, I just, no. the staggering and the running scenes. Mm, mm, mm. That, that was, to me, the trickiest part of the film because we, we make it look authentic as possible. We're actually, mm. out there are run. I don't know, green screen thing. Yeah. No, we are run, we are race. We, we, I would say we we'll make trap meat. Yeah. All right, sir. Big we'll <laughs> <laughs> up to Brenda L. McLeod on the live selling. This is a very good movie and she highly recommends it to everybody. So yeah. I'm going to get some support yeah. already. Nice. Big up, Brenda. Yeah. Telling an authentically Jamaican story, you know how it goes. People tend to have issues, for example, with the language, with, um, with other things, other aspects of our social, our, our mm. culture. So, but we don't want to dilute the thing. So, mm. how did you manage to strike that balance where you gave them an authentic Jamaican movie, but at the same time one that was gen general enough that people from Sweden, from Norway, from yeah. Australia can watch it and appreciate the, the message? I feel that the things that people have an issue with um, in the culture are things that maybe do get a lot of attention or too much attention, or you feel like this is becoming a stereotype. Mm. Like, Everybody laugh at like daggering and love daggering. But if every time it's a jump video from Jamaica going viral is some crazy daggering, then mm -hmm. everybody thinks this is all you know. So yeah. it's like those are things we have issues with. So for me, it was more important to shift the focus into another space where there's still commentary on everything, on the vibes in the dance, on language, on elements of crime in the periphery. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's still references that we all as Jamaicans are referencing but it's not like we're really, it, it's focusing on one type of thing or it's focusing on a space that is too that way and for me that's what's fun I want to show other things and I want to that like the cinematography is interesting like we had a scene that you will see um, where he's like kind of on a balcony the girl and it's over it's perfectly placed where the national stadiums in the background mm -hmm. and we had to cue turn cue with them to turn on their lights at a like, certain time when they would normally turn it on we had to have everything ready and shot at that time because mm. for me like i'm more interested in that visual of this young man at the pinnacle of his thing about to face his big but you know whatever a big moment um not paying attention to it but it's present like mm. those frames to me are important yeah. you know what i mean to show the national stadium and to show and like so th it's them type of things that i feel are way more valuable than to go into space that is just like known and known and known you know i want to go into a new space i always i'm interested in rasta and in kind of showing rastafari and those spaces and relating to the characters in a way that feels genuine as well so there's always things i'm trying to kind of show all right so dale same i mean same similar question for you in terms of did you get any advice from for example david alan greer anybody who to make you your performance authentic but relatable, you know what I mean? So that they yeah. don't really feel like, okay, you have to go get subtitles for understand yeah. where they are. Yeah, I mean, I just, 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 just like a Jamaicanism, pretty just like a fly over our head or something like that. We can get advice. Well, Storm taught me, he always said, less is more. Yeah. So he's like, basically, don't act. Basically, that like, he would say, oh, don't like force it. When you force it on the camera, that is when it come out. Mm -hmm. You know, so like for relax, David, we did have a acting coach named Dustin, mm -hmm. he's an American, yeah, he's great, yeah, he's a great um acting coach. So, mm -hmm. certain scenes, like I would say something, and then Storm would come and he would say, Okay, then give it a give it a Yankee take, <laughs> 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 give it a Yankee, Yankee take. take. <laughs> and you know, so slow it down, and people can understand us. Yeah. The Yankee no, thing. No, 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 you understand, <laughs> yeah. you, know, we have, you know, we forget too deep. But then again, sometimes if it's authentic, it just has to be. Authentic. Yeah, we were yeah. trying to keep it right in there. Right, true. But we had to, but the, 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 the Yankee take was a joke because the you know, foreign producers so was like, can you do, say, one that's a little less thick, just so we have it? Yeah. like, you know what? 
Every time we do a take, once me happy with my take, take. Yankee take. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. It was like a, I don't really see the Yankee take. Yeah, no, Yankee take not really But, <laughs> but always, any amount of takes we do, the last one always the, the Yankee, Yankee take. Just yeah. for the Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> just All in right. case. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, take me, sir. Cameraman, we're going to try to queue up the, the trailer. Hopefully, we can give people a piece of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, take a look. Hopefully, this works out exactly like our plan. Grab the camera, yeah. camera. Sure you want to do this? I go into America to help our family. Jamaica's next big sprinting sensation. Rasta rocking to his umbrella. So I make some money. You're on a dangerous path. No man can outrun the choices he makes. There you have it, people. That's the trailer. That should give you enough motivation to go out there and go watch the movie. Support the movies. That Jamaican movie. We don't need any more excuse. Yeah? I mean, when Black Panther come out, we full up the theater. We full up Caribou. Full up every last theater in Jamaica. We need to full up every last theater in Jamaica for support Sprinter. Because as they say, the rising tide lifts all ships. So the more support we give a movie like this, the more somebody like Will Smith will shout Storm and say, Yo, Storm, what is the next movie? What's going mm. on? You know what I mean? And the more opportunities for our local actors, directors, crew, everybody. Everybody wins when a, when a movie like this does well. So we want everybody to full of every cinema in Jamaica. Carib, what are you tell me what them name? <laughs> Sovereign. So Carib, Mama Sovereign, Mantilla Bay, Ochi. Ochi. Poor more eventually. More eventually, more eventually when the come out. We're getting there. We're getting full there. Of every single cinema. Yeah. All right. So, Stam, I guess the question people want to know, I mean, we, in the middle of this run now, people, the interest is there now. So, the, where can they either see more of your work or what else is going to, what, what else is, what, 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 what I know, yeah. Well, if you want to follow me, it, it's my name, at Storm Salter, S-T-O-R-M-S-A-U-L-T-E-R. Um, and that's my everything, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Uh, but if you want to see more of my work, my website is stormsalter.com. Mm -hmm. um, and there's links to a lot of the stuff that I do, art, photography, other, other work. Um, and in terms of what's next, we feel like Sprinter's really kicking open the door for a, a, a next wave. Um, I'm developing uh, TV series stuff, I'm adapting a novel right now. Actually, uh, John Crow's Devil by Marlon James, mm, his yes, first novel. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I'm in the middle of that. That should be ex that, yeah. that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah, me. and we're also like, um, as a group of us, not just myself, other filmmakers that we collaborate with, we're all trying to work together to um, get projects going. Like, this film is out, there's other projects that are being shot or have just wrapped or are shooting proof of concepts for. This is all, all Jamaican filmmakers and writers. So what we really want to do is just keep building a worldwide audience for Caribbean cinema, Jamaican cinema. So we are going to sit down and watch Sprinter wherever in the world is going to want to watch the next right. Jamaican next Jamaican one, one and the so next one and not only Jamaica even from a Caribbean yeah, standpoint like um, so yeah basically um, we want to just build up audience that everyone can keep adding to all right, uh, so Dale, your turn now. What's, go what's going on? I mean, I know people can always catch you on social media, well, watch your videos there and trust all me. that. But, um, on my social media, you will see what I'm doing, trust me. Right. But um, I just finished school. I just finished UA. Mm -hmm. So I um, moved to California, um, starting out, figuring out an agent. You know, um, I have a few choices. But um, it's just really to 
join the Actors Union in America right now mm -hmm. and um, go to a few auditions and stuff and yeah, see start what get happened. some work and start kick down the doors and thing yeah. and thing and thing and thing. Yeah, but we love it. I mean, I mean, hey, what's not to love? This is a Jamaican film, and every time one of this, especially one of this quality, this caliber, which is being endorsed by you know no less people than Will and Jada, you know, think it's me. You know what I mean? So this is definitely something that we can rally behind, get behind, support, and make sure that this film breaks all kind of records. That's what I want. That's my vision anyway. I don't know what your vision is, but yeah. I see it doing more. I see it. That's what we want. Anything. And honestly, anybody who's skeptical about whether it's worth <laughs> watching can go on our social. It's at Sprinter the Film. Hashtag Sprinter the Film. Almost everyone that goes um, to the cinema, or a lot of people go to the cinema, they tweet about it, they post about it. I have never seen a bad review right. and Jamaican people are blatantly honest that is true that and is very true I get upwards of a hundred direct messages daily and I have never seen one bad review All right. and to be honest I was not worried of seeing any all right see you then. <laughs> confident but yeah uh, well, people are loving it, so I just feel people like love don't it. wait until you can see it on your home TV or something like that. It's really worth oh, you owe it yourself to go sit in that big room with the, your, your fellow Jamaicans and like watch it. this movie on the big screen. I've known people who watched yeah. it twice. Yeah, you met that two, three, four times. <laughs> yeah. people, as just, people just go and watch it again. Yeah. All right. All right, Jenks people, there you have it. Sprinter in theaters now. Go on out, go support it. We need it. We love it. We, we want more like this. This is where we want the film industry to grow. Big budget productions that really incorporate our local talent, our local people, and see ourselves on the big screen showing the talent that we know that all us Jamaicans have. All right, so that's, I mean, just let people know, give them your, your social stuff one more yeah. time so they know where to find you. Yeah, man. Uh, Storm Salter, so at Storm Salter, that's my Instagram, my Twitter. Um, stormsalter.com is my website and the film is at sprinter the film hashtag sprinter the film sprinter the film dot com all right Dale yes um, Dale Elliott that's all across all social media now you know Dale Elliott Jr mm -hmm. not not the spelling but JR you know and you can that's on my Facebook Instagram Twitter everywhere all right, wonderful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to wrap. Thank you to everyone who tuned into our discussion, especially those of you sending your questions and your comments. Really, really appreciate those. And if you're sending a question and we didn't get to answer it, not to worry. We'll be going back through afterwards and be able to get the answers that you need. And if anything, link up with Storm or Dale and make them touch base with you and find out whatever information you need. Remember, our audience plays a major part in our show. If there's anyone you'd like for us to have in studio, let us know and we'll do our best to have that person in studio as soon as possible. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Information Service to see who will be in studio next. We do this mostly on Thursdays, but we're doing a, we made a special, special, special accommodation for the Sprinter film today because, hey, it's worth it. Go and go watch the film, by the way, you know what I'm saying? One more yeah. time. I've been your host, Vaughn Davis, and this has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you again for joining us, and please have a wonderful day.